Okay, this is a video I hope might be interesting to people who sort of find camouflage interesting. It's the difference between micro and macro patterns in camouflage, which are kind of a concept with camouflage design. And this is something where you'll sometimes hear people refer to it, but they'll never explain what micro and macro is, and it's quite hard if you Google it to actually get the information. So what I'm hoping I can do with this video is hopefully, from what the research I've done, explain what micro and macro patterns actually are, and then... Um, you know, that way you will be able to understand what I'm getting at with this video. So, you've got both micro and macro, so what do they both mean? Micro, think microscope, is a small one, macro is the bigger one. Now, what makes macro a bit annoying is that on a camera, if you're taking photos of small things, you use a macro setting. So that's a bit confusing, isn't it? But basically, micro small, macro is big, if you're using the terms properly. So. How does that factor into camouflage? Well, I'm using Flectarn for the first bit of this video because Flectarn is probably the best example of this because Flectarn is a design that incorporates micro and macro patterns. Some camouflage do either one or the other. For camouflages that can pull both off work far better because micro patterns work close, better at close range and macro patterns work better at further away ranges, longer ranges. What I'll try and do, if I remember as well, is flash up images where I demonstrate this during the video. So let me get close to the camera and I'll scroll the camera down a bit. Right, if we look at the flectarn, you'll see there's lots of different little circles, <clears throat> basically. Now, the circles in areas congeal to make a bigger area. Um, so you can see this dark green here is a bigger sort of blob. So that would then become a macro pattern, because it's one you'll see at a further distance. The micro patterns would be like little dots there, where you can see the individual little bits of it. This is called five colour flecton, by the way, the traditional flecton everybody's familiar with. So if you look at the sort of design of this, you can see that in places the dots sort of uh, bunch together. You can see a load of black on the sleeve where that's done like that. And um, that is where you've got your sort of macro patterns, where there's the splodges that form together. When there's dots sort of on their own, it's a micro pattern. But in theory, flactarn is only made up of micro patterns that then, when together, make a macro pattern. Hopefully this isn't getting too confusing. So, basically, if you're looking at the flectarn, you'll be able to see that, you know, the reason it works well is because at close range you'll see the smaller dots and you'll think that's different sort of shades of leaves in a bush or something, uh, something like that. When you get further away, and this is where hopefully I'll put the pictures in if I remember and the video will make more sense, you'll then start noticing the colours look like bigger splodges of colour. Now, one of the things with camouflage is that it's kind of irritating in the sense that if you're designing a camouflage, when somebody sees it at a distance, their eyesight won't be as good and their brain won't be able to make out colours and shapes as well. So what actually happens is the brain doesn't necessarily see all the colours properly and what will happen is lots of similar colours will blend into one. So, for example, these greens around here might just look like one splodge of green, whereas sort of the blacks there might turn into one splodge of black. You know, splodges of brown in places might look like one bigger splodge of brown. So... <clears throat> The issue is with lots of camos that focus too much on the micro patterns is that at a distance the camouflage effect is useless because the entire camouflage ends up looking like a blur of one or two colours. Obviously for a camo to work well at a distance it needs to have a good macro pattern which makes it disruptive. Basically it looks like big splodges of different colours and different shapes so the eye has a hard time seeing an object like a person wearing the camouflage they can say, instead see different bits of colour and the brain doesn't really recognise it as a human shape. That's how camo breaks up the silhouette. But as you can probably see, at close range this is pretty effective. It's hard to work out. Obviously, although you can see my form, if I was against leaves and other things, this is kind of confusing to the eye and it's not going to really work it out as a thing. And as I said, I'll put up pictures of this at a distance. So that's what you want to kind of do. Now what I'll do in a moment is just show you some British disruptive uh, camouflage pattern, or DPM, disruptive pattern material. You know, the famous British one, like Woodland DPM. And you'll be able to see on that that it has a tiny bit of micro design in it, but it's nearly entirely a macro camouflage to con contrast it with Flectarn. So let me grab that now. Right, let's contrast DPM printed onto a Gore-Tex um, raincoat, like this Flectarn raincoat. And you'll notice that, for the most part, the DPM is much big, bigger splodges than the flectarm. So it's much more of an actual um, macro pattern. 
However, there is a bit of micro. You might be able to see like now and again there's like little dots. So there is micro pattern actually on DPM. It's just nowhere near as obvious and I think that's too small to actually be effective. It doesn't hurt to have it there. But DPM is definitely one of those camouflages that works better at a distance than up close. The reason being, like, this would never trick your brain, in my opinion, at close ranges to think you're looking at leaves or bits of bark or things like that, because while it definitely follows the rule of there are no straight lines in nature, I don't think a camo like this actually really looks like anything. But it is obviously in very obvious colour blocks, as you can see, but they're not obviously repeating colour blocks. The fleck time, obviously, on the other hand, has much smaller micro pattern, but the fleck time is a very good camo because they've actually arranged it so the micro patterns become macro patterns at a long range. If I twist round, you'll probably be able to see some more of those patterns there. So I'm saying this is an actual good, you know, very good camouflage fleck time because they've really, you know, done a good job designing fleck time when they thought how are we going to arrange it? As I said, if I was personally designing fleck time, I would have changed the black to a very dark green or a very dark brown simply because black doesn't occur in nature, but that's kind of a more of a modern camouflage thing when they're finally moving black lines from camouflages. So, as you can see with the DPM, you've got your little black splodges on it as well, but this is primarily a dark brown, um, a sort of mid-green and a tan colour. Um, with DPM as well, and with the Flecton, when they're printed on the Gore-Tex coats, the camo colours change slightly. I actually think Flecton works better when it's printed on these coats, but... Um, what you'll see with this is actual DPM if you're getting the um, Soldier 95 like Woodland DPM uniforms. They're normally a bit darker. Uh, for example, it looks more like a dark brown. The brown is more obviously a brown than it is on the coat, um, but you know the colours are a bit more obvious. The green definitely looks a darker green. That's what I'm trying to get at. Like with the flecked on them, I've got the flecked on trousers on, so you might see. Again, the colour pattern is probably different. You might be able to notice from the coat if I get my leg up high enough. Maybe just scroll down a bit more with the camera, it'd be the easier thing to do. But as you can probably see, the reds, for example, and the shades are different on the trousers. And supposedly, part of the reason for that, and I kind of like this though, is that when the Germans had flecked on printed, supposedly they hired quite a few companies to do it, nobody really used exact inks. This has been a thing of other nations as well, but it's more interesting with the flecton. But I think in some ways that helps, because if you have lots of troops of flecton on, and the flecton colours aren't quite the same, but they're close enough for all the people wearing it, um, you know, on, on the shirts or the jackets and things like that, it actually does a much better job of being a good disruptive camo. And, um, you know, because if you see a lot of people squatting down together with it on, but neither of them are the exact shade, your brain has a harder time, you know, recognising patterns, because a lot of the thing with camouflage is not recognising patterns. Um, but as you can see, Flectar, I think, is really effective because it incorporates the micro-small patterns and the macro-bigger patterns. Something like DPM is all about the macro pattern, really. Um, there are camouflages like Strictan, where it's got a very small micro-pattern on it, the problem with strict on, of course, is once you go beyond a certain range, it just looks like a browny, greeny colour. It blends in colour-wise very well, but it has no disruptive element. For a camouflage to be disruptive, you know, and hide the human form, it has to be very good at being, um, you know, large blocks of contrasting colours, and colours that contrast, obviously, enough that in the distance, um, the human eye sees them as two different colours, rather than immediately just seeing the camo as one kind of brown-green lump, and then recognising the human silhouette. So, that's the theory when it comes to camouflage in micro and macro patterns. Obviously, a camouflage that can do both is very good. If I could only have one that would do one or the other, I would probably go for macro patterns like the DPM, simply because I think most of the time you don't want to get spotted at a distance. You know, if you're up close, you're probably going to more be aware that somebody's coming through hearing them or something like that. Whereas at a distance, obviously, you don't want somebody spotting you 100 yards away, something like that. So... Overall, I think macro patterns are more important, because that's what a lot of the older camouflages as well focused on, just macro patterns. It's just over time, obviously micro patterns were perfected to the design where they can work as both, basically. But, again, with camouflage, people always find ways of improving it. What I will quickly show you before I forget is with the modern British uh, camouflage, uh, the multi-terrain pattern, I think this is the same for American multi-cam as well. It actually uses loads and loads of different shades. So, 
let me just demonstrate that quickly. Okay, so here's multi-terrain pattern. Now, if you look at this, hopefully this might be obvious to the camera. Compared to a lot of camos, there's lots of bits where it kind of gradients into other colours rather than being a, you know, flat out contrasting sort of bit. Now, that's both good and bad. It's good as it, and it works a bit like a micro pattern as well, where, um, you know, at closer ranges it looks better for the brain because obviously colours naturally kind of flow into each other a lot more in nature rather than being, you know, very contrasting. But at the same time, it does have enough contrasting elements that it does work as a disruptive camouflage pattern at range. Um, so I think this is the way they're kind of moving forward with some camo patterns now, is to kind of have a gradient as well as simply having the um, micro and macro patterns. You'll notice compared to older DPM, this has much more of an actual um, micro sort of pattern to it. Uh, if we look at it, see there's lots more where there's bits sort of feathering off and lots of little blobs for no reason in bits rather than just the big brush strokes. So, I'm saying I think the MTP is kind of a good evolution of DPM. Whether or not it would work as well at certain distances, I don't know, because you do have to have all these things in. I don't think you can ever have a perfect camo, both colour-wise and, you know, everything else. Camos like this tend to work well pretty much everywhere, but not as good as some of the camouflages in other places. For example, a camouflage like this um, would be very good if you're in, um, obviously, sort of shrubby desert, arid conditions, um, woods in either the winter or sort of spring, like sort of when I'm filming this video time sort of kind of time period because you know there's you see a lot more brown sort of stuff where there's not as many leaves you see obviously grass that's green and a bit of moss but you don't see lots and lots of leaves on all the trees whereas when you get into something like autumn the more colorful flecton um, and its splodgy design works a lot better as well flecton I think is a much better camouflage if you're hiding in a bush line obviously if you think what it would look like to look into the bushes and the trees with lots of leaves on them, you'd expect to see something like that really, not something like this. But again, as I've said in other camouflage videos, because this is really rambling on now and I want to sum it up, it depends a lot on the user's skill of wearing the camouflage. If you're good at concealing yourself and you're wearing something that doesn't stand out, you'll be you'll do a much better job of hiding than somebody who does not you know, know what the first thing what they're doing of camouflage. You'll see that a lot where people silhouette themselves and do stuff like that or have no noise discipline, they're chatting really loudly even though they're meant to be hiding somewhere, not being obvious. So obviously, somebody in a semi-decent camo pattern that knows what they're doing is much harder to find than somebody who is, you know, wearing much better camo but not, you know, thinking about it. But obviously, if you have the best camo possible for your area and you really knew what you're doing, then that's the best, you know, combination of all. But hopefully this video at least has explained what micro patterns are and macro patterns. Remember, micro, small, macro, big. A good camouflage incorporates both and they work well together.